In today's video, we're going to walk through an example of a minimal authentication setup that provides easy API key management through a convenient built-in admin UI. This setup can be ideal for internal services or microservices as it avoids all the machinery and management of user accounts while still enabling fine-grained access control using managed API keys. Securing your internal or system-to-system -system APIs by default is a good habit to have, but introducing features like user management can not only bring with it performance overhead on a per-request basis, but generally make your system more complicated than it might need to be. By default, Service Stack solution templates like those that use Blazor now use ASP.NET Core Identity by default, which is a great choice for user-facing systems. However, other templates like our simple web template try to focus on just the minimal aspects of building functional service APIs, so authentication isn't added by default. Today we will start with the basic web template solution and show you an option for securing your system-to-system -system APIs that doesn't require user management, but in a way that not only gives you fine-grained control over how your services can be accessed, but also an easy way to manage the access you provide through a built-in admin UI. If you're starting a new project from scratch, the easiest way to do this is using the servicestack.net website and the Getting Started page. Here you can provide a name and then select the features you want included. For example, we'll include API keys and an RDBMS of SQLite for simplicity, but you could use any of these four providers. Because we want a minimal template, we'll select the web template and then download the solution, unzip it to a local directory and open it with your preferred .NET IDE. If you want to incorporate the same features we selected on the start page for the new solution, you can do so using the servicestack.net x tool and the commands x mix space api keys hyphen auth and sqlite if you're using it for your rdbms. If we run the solution at this point, we will get a hello service which is open and doesn't require any form of authentication. However, our application is ready to use API key authentication and manage those API keys via the built-in admin UI. And we can see how this works if we open up our app host project and look in the configure.apikeys.cs file. In this class, we have two plugins configured, the auth feature and the API keys feature. The auth feature is initialized with an auth secret auth provider. This enables the use of the built-in admin UIs using a single super admin user. The auth secret auth provider takes a constructor that can be passed a string of a password. How this is initialized is up to your own requirements, but for simplicity, we're just using a fixed value. No additional configuration is added to the API keys feature, but some examples are provided in comments. The configure app host method also has the initialization of the API keys feature schema. This is how your API keys are stored in the database, which in this case is a SQLite database. The use of an IDB connection factory can be seen and initialized in the configure.db.cs file. Now if we run our application and navigate to the forward slash admin hyphen UI path, we will be greeted with a prompt for the configured auth secret. Providing the auth secret configured in the configure.apikeys.cs file, and we can now access the built-in server stack admin UIs, which has an API keys link on the left-hand side. This is where the super user admin can generate standalone API keys for access to restricted services. Currently, the hello service is still unrestricted, but if we add the attribute validate API key to the hello request DTO and restart our application, the front page example is now rejecting the request and returning a 401 invalid API key response. Navigating back to our API keys admin page, we can click on the new API key button at the top. Providing a name, expiration, and optional restrictions, scopes, and notes, 
we get a modal dialog containing our API key. This will be the only time the API key is shown on the user interface, so we'll want to copy it so we can access the now restricted Hello API. If we navigate to the API Explorer, which is available at forward slash UI, we can see that the Hello API on the left has a key icon next to it. All APIs that are restricted using the validate API key attribute will display this to indicate that it's an API key restricted service. Clicking on hello and the API Explorer will warn us to input a valid API key. And we can see our invalid API key error if we try to run it without one. Providing the API key we generated earlier, this warning will disappear and the API Explorer will retain your API key until the next full page load. Once entered, we can use the API as normal from the API Explorer since each request the API key is being provided via the x-api-key request header. In a situation where you have multiple systems accessing this standalone API which have different access requirements, you can restrict individual API keys that you generate to specific services that are restricted via the validate API key attribute. And we can do this by using the restrict to multi-select control which is automatically populated with all your API key restricted services. If you have a large number of services that can be grouped into different groups, we can configure your API key feature plugin with a full list of scopes, and specific scopes can be applied to the validate API key attribute on your services. The scopes populated in your API keys feature plugin will then be available as a collection of checkboxes which you can use when creating API keys. And lastly, you can also disable and change the details about specific API keys to enforce restrictions as needed, as well as monitor the usage of API keys from this easy to use admin UI. This pattern of simple authentication with the API key feature plugin and admin auth secret provides a minimal fuss practical approach for internal and system to system services. You get flexible fine grained access controls over your restricted services which are all accessible from a simple web interface to manage that access with the service stack admin UIs. Well that's it for this video, if you have any suggestions or feedback please let us know in the comments, or you can join us on our community discord or github discussions. Service stack is free for individuals so anyone is welcome, and as always thanks for watching.